A Bucks County woman says she's alive today because of what someone else did for her. And now she's sharing her story. Last night, we introduced you to Megan Cohen, who as a little girl was full of love, life, and the pure innocence of a child. But at the age of 18, her life changed almost overnight. Casual social drinking took a drastic and dangerous turn. She spent eight years drug addicted on the streets of Kensington, eventually hitting rock bottom. Tonight, what she says saved her life and how she's now working tirelessly to save others. You're going to see a lot of people that don't have homes, a lot of tents, people using drugs. The streets are littered with drug paraphernalia. It's unlike anything, any place else that I've been. How is your uncle doing? He's good. He's doing well. He's sober? On this night, we go back with her to the streets she once called home, the epicenter of sirens, shootings, and shooting up. So I don't really pay attention like, you know, people are shooting up around me. I'm not sitting there like looking at it. Um, you know what I mean? Like I, I just have to. I have to be aware of like what my purpose out here is and focus on that and then I, I don't worry about the rest. Her purpose now is with an organization she founded called The Grace Project, grateful recovering addicts caring for everyone. So we bring food out um, and like we hope with like giving the food that we can kind of like engage in a connection. The goal is like to get somebody into treatment um, every single week. It doesn't always happen. You can't force somebody to go, um, but just kind of opening that door with them by like giving them something that's like a basic need for them. Here, Megan's sole mission is to provide food. You want a water? Yeah. Comfort, and if needed, Narcan. While there, we see one woman give another woman an injection in the neck. Three minutes later, she's on the ground. Never know. Sorry, I need you over there. We're good. I'm sorry. Megan goes to work. Are you responsive? Can you can you answer me? Because they're about to Narcan you. Can you answer me? You don't want to get Narcan, right? All right. So stay with me. Can you get up? Did you drink some water? She did drink some. Yeah. All right. Just stay up with us because you're scaring people, and I don't I don't want you to get Narcan and get sick. You know. Can I drink some more water? Did you eat anything? Describe that episode to me. So that's like super common. Um, it's hard because like with everything that they're cutting the drugs with now, people get like that and they're not necessarily going to overdose. When they go down, you don't know. So like my initial response and all the volunteers is like get the Narcan just in case. So luckily like she was starting to respond. What is it like being back out here in it? You're recovering. Is it easier because you're immersed in it and you don't want to end up back here? Or in some ways, is it harder because you're surrounded by it again, the place where you lived here on the streets? Yeah, so it, I mean, it's always different. If I'm not in a good state of mind, I'm not going to come out here um, because it could be a trigger to me if I'm not like mentally in the right spot or spiritually in the right spot. Here, there's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no desire to hide the addiction. It's all in plain sight. The natural instinct might be to turn away and not look, ignore it. Megan says we can't afford to do that. Everyone is somebody's daughter, brother. Son, you know what I mean? Like they all matter. They just they got caught up just like I got caught up. Volunteering in Kensington with Megan. Mom, where's your phone? Her mother. You've got your daughter back. Yes, I do. It's amazing. It's am I didn't think I would. I expected a phone call every night. She was probably doing 500 to to $1,000 a day, and she was not Megan anymore. She was in and out of 70-some rehabs. She would go in, she would get sober, and then she would take off. They're not themselves. They're to they're it's the devil on their back. So they all say no is get high, get high, get high, and what do I need to do to get high? And if I don't, I'm going to die. I would show her a picture. Have you seen her? Yes, honey, we have seen her. You know, we'll call you if we see her. Actually, some of the people on the streets would go into the abandoned house that she was in, and she would say, no, I'm not coming out or whatever, but at least I knew she was alive. Megan eventually asked for a sign from God and says she got it through a stranger who asked to take her in. I was like withering away, like my face was picked apart. I was dirty, like I hadn't showered in like two weeks. Um, and here's like this stranger saying like, you know, right after I, I was praying for a sign, no, like I see something in you and like, let me help you out. You can't understand it until you actually come out here. Megan now rescued with a mission to save others. Do you want to go tonight or no? Whenever they're ready. There's really no way to describe it you know, because they're taking that first step to possibly getting their lives back together. It makes all of the hard work worth it. Um, you know, I love it. I love seeing it. I made it out. So I just, I want other people to know that they can make it out too. 
And as much as her mother tried to rescue her, Megan says it somehow resonated more when a stranger reached out. She said, you expect your family to be there for you and believe in you. But the fact that a stranger saw something in her gave her that hope. And the next day, she called her mother and said, I'm ready. Her mom not believing that this was her calling. It's interesting. There was some Megan still in there because she said she was looking for that sign from God. So she knew she needed help. Yes, she did. At the tail end, yeah. she wanted a sign and she relied on faith. And she said that combination of hope and faith is what rescued her and those strangers reaching out. What is she up to now? I know the volunteer work, obviously, but what else? Yes, yeah, so she's getting her degree in business from Purdue. Amazing. And the Grace Project is the organization that she founded, and that's Kensington Outreach. But also she's working with children whose lives are impacted by poverty, addiction, sickness, and she's helping them at the holidays and throughout the entire year. They're looking for volunteers. We put a link on our website, nbc10.com slash find it on 10. Doing incredible work. She says if she can make it out, anyone can. Remarkable person and an incredible story. Yeah, very hopeful story. And she is an angel. She is yeah. giving back. Wonderful story, Jacqueline.